the minister said that Nigeria received donations from government, multilateral and non-governmental organizations and individuals. He however explained that the sum of $5.6 billion from the World Bank was a loan secured from the world body for COVID-19 intervention at both the federal and state levels. It is false that Nigeria received $5.6 billion as donations towards COVID-19. You know, the pandemic impacted the global oil market, which reduced Nigeria's revenue by about 57% due to reduced and OPEC plus production cut. Nigeria obtained these loans of $5.6 billion from the World Bank, the IMF, the Islamic Development Bank, and the African Development Bank as budget financing to plug the revenue shortfall. So they were not donations. Trapo. Keynote speaker and country director of Action Aid in Nigeria, Henning Obi, said that it was disturbing that Nigeria still has weak health facility even with the donations the country received from many European countries during the COVID-19 outbreak. She said that President Mohamed Buhari's medical trip abroad was a bad commentary on the effective application of the assistance Nigeria got from donor nations. Eni said that the accountability and transparency in the distribution of COVID relief to Nigerians became questionable when the government shared to the public items seized by the customs instead of items purchased with donations received by governments. The palliative, the distribution of the palliative, it beats everyone in Nigeria that the we have distributions that were in the warehouses. It was really bad for many, not only for the very poor, but those because of the kind of informal sector, you know, contribution to the economy. You know, most Nigerians operate at the informal level. And because of that, many of them went out of town. You can imagine somebody who, who is an Uber rider calls you and say, Auntie, please, can you give me money for feeding? I have no money in the house. They have the energy, they have all that it takes. But you have the palliative stored in warehouses, and you saw what happened eventually. Why were you having it stored in the warehouses? We have a lot of young people. And so if you are lacking, if you call for volunteers in terms of distribution, you will get that. And then we are hearing of so much, so much of the funding, but the rice that were even being distributed, some of the rice were coming from customs, seized goods, and all of those things. And when I see seized goods being distributed, I know that some families have lost certain things there. Other issues which attracted comments from participants at the conference included the distribution of COVID-19 palliatives along party lines and corruption in the course of distributing cash to the poorest of the poor. Interestingly, as much as we can look at some of the corrupt cases in Nigeria, our counterpart in Africa is not left behind. During our time in Malawi, and it excitedly, our recommendation was used by the president to fire the Minister of Labor in Malawi. Yes, the work that Budget and Code is doing in Malawi actually got the president to look at our report and sack his minister for labor. During the Ebola project, um, that, was one, that was our first West African pilot project where we had um, our work extend to um, Syria alone and Liberia, and also Guinea. And we also found the same similarities, misappropriation of funds, abuse of public resources, and even um, wanton corruption. 100 billion uh, money that has been uh, marked for this year, but so far 288 billion naira um, was released. So uh, so far, um, well, for for us during our tracking exercise, uh, we don't think there is really equal distribution of those. Uh, those funds were not really expended because um, access to information on those projects and which they promised that they've they've uh, executed, we don't we don't really see those things on ground. And most of those funds that went for the palliative were not equally distributed because the method of selection were not known to the people. So we think there's a little uh, big disconnect between people and the citizen and the government. The one day conference which focused on transparency and accountability in the COVID-19 intervention was organized by a non-governmental organization, COVID-19 Transparency and Accountability in Africa. Nasiru Usman in Abuja for Signature TV.